everyone and welcome back and today I want to talk about hybrid backup sync version 3 uh, from QNAP and this really is one of their best tools. I'm someone that talks about NAS a hell of a lot on this channel, the other channel, NAS Compare, Span.com, you name it. And one of the biggest reasons that a number of you buy a network attached storage device after your Plex and your VMs and your surveillance is simply to have your data safe. We're generating so much data these days, there's no denying it that the integrity of a data solution, be it as a backup, a primary, a secondary, however you want to call it, is incredibly important. And whether you're utilizing a NAS or a cloud platform, having all your data in one place just isn't enough in terms of security. And that's why a tool like this exists. Now, full disclosure, this is not the first time I've used hybrid backup sync um, here on the channel. I've utilized earlier versions of it to show you some of the features. And today I want to highlight as many as possible. But let's get a few disclaimers right off the bat. First and foremost, you are gonna notice occasionally this little guy in the corner, QBoost, going crazy. The reason being is I'm preparing this now as a TS251B for several videos today. And I've had the device up and running for a very short length of time and I've installed absolutely loads of applications. The reason being is I have a whole video for a lot of these applications and some of them are HD station. The, so the consequence is that I'm gonna be utilizing a lot of memory in the background. So, it's not really fair that if you, you know, you're going to see this guy going crazy, that's because of the memory, uh, memory utilization I'm in currently using in installing all of these apps. So don't judge this device or this app harshly for that. That is my fault for having all that memory being utilized and not something you can blame the QNAP for because it's got two gig of memory and I'm using way too much of it there in the background. But let's get back on point. Hybrid backup sync. A great little tool there's no denying it because what a lot of nas brands get wrong is as much as you want to be able to connect with as many platforms as possible be they other nas's mobile phones pcs cloud platforms or more what you want is a single point of access and although synology have come very very close in terms of a single point of synchronizing and handling all of those backups together with hyper backup it's not quite as good as hybrid backup sync. Not only can you synchronize with cloud, NAS, and local client platforms, but you have a better user interface in which to do it. And that is kind of what's key here. Because although this isn't the only um, software of its kind available on NAS, it has an unparalleled user interface. You can synchronize with remote NASs, internet-based NASs, and um, network-based NASs, as well as multiple instances of cloud platforms all at once. And that's another biggie too, having multiple of the same cloud platform running at the same time. On top of that, the job creation and the one point uh, one uh, portal access point is very, very good too. And finally, if you want to utilize your own third party uh, backup applications with the NAS, they can be handled too. So let's have a look at our user interface here. Let's close that. And from here, you've got a bunch of options. I could do a whole video and probably will on QDADUP, and that is their um, multiple deduplication strategy and client application that is readily available for your client PC or Mac system. For those that aren't aware, deduplication is when you have the same file from multiple locations being backed up to a single NAS. And deduplication, what it does is only keep one copy of that file, but keeps a record of the fact that that file is available on multiple locations. So. For example, if you download the Windows tool here, which I will do for a future video, and if you've got multiple of the same file coming from multiple devices or a single device or single server, QDDoop will make sure that it only backs up one copy of that file, but just make sure that it remembers all of the different instances of where that file is being used. On top of that, there's other secret, uh, other not secret, but other multi-cloud support services readily available. And from this access point, this is where we overview the individual storage spaces that we're using for synchronization and widespread backup over the network and internet, but also our alerts. And finally, how are our job statuses of jobs still to go and jobs in progress. Now, let's say we want to set up the first job. We want to set up 
a backup job or a restoration job of data. For a backup job, we simply click there, and the first thing it will ask us to do is select the source folder of the NAS that we're using that we want to back up from, say, the multimedia folder. From there, we click that that is the folder we want to utilize. We then click next, and it will invite us to say what kind of storage space destination are we using. Now, from here, it is a simple tick box system. We can filter by different kinds, but say we want to filter to a remote NAS that's a non-QNAP NAS or a localized NAS on the network. On top of that, we can choose to synchronize with cloud platforms too, such as Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, and more, and some lesser known ones from out there in the east. And what's really cool is once you select them, each one will come up with its own login or its own instance. You don't have to worry about doing loads of different options or tailoring background options. Every one of these is its own user interface. So for example, if we use the Amazon one, just log in and boom, it will pair with it. If you want to utilize the NAS functionality, it will then invite you to enter those NAS credentials in said, uh, instead. But because I haven't set up another NAS for this, I am not gonna enter information today, but you genuinely only have to enter your IP information and your login information there for a real-time remote replication or RTRR, or for rsync, you can go even further. From there, you can set up schedules, rules, and effectively set up the right kind of backup job where maybe certain files are backed up, or all files, or maybe a diff backup, or only certain files when there's been changes are backed up. And you can even review previous choices here as well. Now, you can run this from either end. So from the restore, you can then do the same thing, but this time in reverse. You can say that you're the receiver of these choices. And the whole thing is presented in an incredibly user-friendly fashion. Now, for synchronization, this is when you have two access points that are running simultaneously the same files. You can create a two-way sync where a change in one affects the other one. A one-way sync where only changes on one of the two are recorded with the other device keeping a historical record or an active sync job that will um, only make changes when changes happen and it pushes those changes instantly. All of these very similar indeed. You just choose what you want to do, set it up, create the rules, create the schedule and more. It is incredibly intuitive and user friendly. As you create jobs, they will appear here and then you can choose to check the schedule or action them manually if you so choose. And it works in both directions too when you have an incoming job from another NAS sending files to you. The services option is where you can utilize some of those third party backup methods. And if you're an Apple user, you'll of course know about Apple Time Machine. And from here, all you have to do with a QNAP NAS is set up your Apple Time Machine password on your local machine and you can create your Apple Time Machine back up here. And it can be done locally or even over the internet if you are using internet-based services. With the different backups happening in the background, you can then view a list of all the available backups of your Apple Time Machine and delete them or assign priority. And of course, total capacity will always be monitorable. Now, rsync and RTRR server settings here are for when you want to have the NAS that you're utilizing be pulled from or to via a third party system. So say you've set up another NAS that is either sending data to or accessing data from this NAS. From here, you can create individual login passwords as an extra tier of security between the data leaving and being received by your NAS. And of course, down here with one touch USB copy buttons and USB ports on the majority of QNAP NASs. From here, you can set up what happens when a USB storage device is connected to your QNAP NAS. You can set it up, that the one touch copy button, what it does when that USB is connected, or you can say how all external devices, what happens when they are connected and how you want the device to work with. And if you do smart import, it will automatically connect and receive data and select the destination of an external drive that you connect. And again, you can set individual USBs or specific USBs to do certain tasks with different USB drives. Finally, you can look at the available storage space that you are using on your NAS for backups and synchronization. You can change storage pools, and as you add more and more backup tasks and more devices, 
down here will be a real-time map of your storage environment and how different devices are connected and with remote and cloud services included too whereas if you include your Dropbox or your Google Drive or your OneDrive they will also be displayed here too it is a fantastically easy and intuitive bit of software there and one that I think QNAC could be substantially proud of now there's a little bit of this that can be utilized within the hybrid mount system where you can connect other NAS storage areas and cloud areas to run as hybrid storage and mounted storage areas with your NAS and if you don't want to utilize them as a backup but as more storage being bolted onto your NAS this app's useful too but I'll save that for another video but this has been hybrid backup sync from QNAP version 3 and I do recommend you upgrade to it now just make sure you've got the right version of QTS the very latest version 4.4 um, I believe it's 4.4.1 uh, the latest revision do get that installed and find out more. I'll be covering some more of these applications very, very soon, and I am genuinely looking forward to talking to you guys about QSearch, another hugely overlooked application that I think a number of you should really install today on your QNAP NAS. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Click like and subscribe to learn more. And if you enjoyed it, click like, of course, and click the bell notification button just below the video to be notified about more relevant research results for you. 